In this video, I'm going to bring you through the exact process that I would use to actually be able to build a business and sell it. There's nothing worse than spending all of your hard earned cash, money, resources, team members to build something that is not able to sell. And you're essentially not building any equity value, right? Which doesn't make any sense. So as soon as we start building a business, we want to make sure that we put the right systems in place uh, to be able to build equity over time so that selling a business is way more easier two, three, four, five, ten 10 years along the line whenever you are ready to sell, okay? With no further ado, let's get right into the video. There's a lot to cover. Great, so this video is actually, and I would say honestly, is gonna be an exciting one because I always see entrepreneurs, especially the you know the entrepreneurs that are building businesses for the first time that they're building um they're spending so much time sweat and tears and whatever call it whatever you want a lot of time putting um you know distributing their energies and building something that is actually not sellable and they're literally if you think about it wasting time because even if you can create a lifestyle business that pays for your whatever for your lifestyle for your dinners for your rent for your whatever you're actually doing nothing if you're not building to sell. And it's important to build to sell for two simple reasons. Number one, you have the options to do that and you're actually spending a bunch of time um, and you're allocating a bunch of resources to building something that is worth over time. And number two, even if you end up not selling, if you build to sell, you automatically put yourself in the best of the best scenarios when it comes to operating a business, right? Because if you're building to sell, you have to make sure that you have certain fundamentals that work um, on the sidelines to, to be able to operate a business or run a business that operates smoothly, right? Which is what buyers or private equity investors look for when they buy a business, right? So I'm going to bring you through, uh, through some certain, you know, let's call them four con um, core fundamentals. I have like five that I want to go through so far. One, two, three, four, five. Of course, these are not the only things that you need to look for uh, um, when it comes to you know, building enterprise value to be able to sell, there's a lot more. But these are the five, you know, principles that are really, really necessary. So first of all, just for, for the new viewers, if you're not, you know, if you're, whoops, let me just pull this up and enable a feature here that will allow me to not do that anymore. So for the new viewers, um, just so, so you know who you're speaking to or, or who you, you are listening to, uh, we've been able to work with like hundreds of businesses, uh, not I would say hundreds, but over 100 plus e-commerce brands in the last seven years or so. And so if you haven't looked at the live proof, call it whatever you want, you can take a look at some of my old videos where I just show you uh, some of the clients that we've been able to work with. And so I've been able to assist uh, or at least be in the sidelines of the due diligence of the diligence process uh, when actually buyers come in um, and go to my client and, you know, Put, put in an offer. And because of that, I've been able to understand what actually creates more value for a business and what actually creates less value for, for a business, which is why I wanted to create this video. So we've been able to work with like multiple seven and, and ten um, and nine figure businesses, or I guess eight figure businesses, as you can see. And so all of these things, or all of these businesses that actually build enterprise value over time, um, and attract buyers, uh, have these five things in common. So let me start off with the first one over here. They have multiple, uh, multiple product launches and financial models. So one of the things that um, you know buyers look at whenever whenever it comes to actually buying a business is that they want to make sure that there's uh, the distribution of risk is like distributed as, as much as possible. I'll give you an example of like what they don't look for. So if they have one business that sells one singular product and there's no evolution or new, you know. Uh, features or benefits or not features or benefits but if there aren't other products that are looking to launch in the market or other financial models like recurring models for example then the business is solely relying on this product which is extremely extremely risky and so one of the best things that you can do to increase enterprise value and increase the value of your business is actually start introducing new products right so two, three, four, five, ten products, right? And of course, you don't want to go crazy because you know you can't spread too thin over time. But you should be able to launch one product every three to months, three to four months, every quarter, right? You should be able to launch something new to the market to your um, to your current customers and to the market every three to four months, right? That is a good uh, kind of like you know 
KPI in terms of time frame, and also financial models. When I say financial models, I, I basically mostly meant recurring models because rec there's two types of, of, of financial or of recurring or I guess models let's call them one is that you buy once and the other the other one is that you you know you create a, a repeat a repeat purchasable process where you you know people can subscribe perhaps save five ten fifteen percent and they get a subscription every three uh, uh, three months every month every 12 months whatever it is but these businesses uh, these buyers look for consistency in sales right and they need uh, predictability, right? So uh, buying a business is already a re very, very risky, as you can imagine. So if there's one thing that they look for is actually that sustainability and predictability factor, which is what subscription gives you, right? So if you haven't explored, if you haven't explored those models, this is something that I would highly, highly recommend that automatically increases your, your perceived value of the business, but also just enterprise value overall. So stick with me because now I'm going to bring you through some, some of my most important KPI tracking systems that will allow you to drastically increase the value of your business. Okay. So tracking KPIs, this is one of the first things that, that you should focus on. Okay. If you don't track your KPIs, you basically, your business is worth nothing because whenever you, you approach or a buyer approaches you, that's the first thing that they ask for. How do you track your numbers? What are your numbers? How do you know how to make the right decisions in your company? Literally, how do you make the, your decisions in your company? And if your business, and if your answer is, well, I just look at my competitors and hope that something sticks on the wall, well, that's not the right answer, right? So let me bring you through um, some of my own tracking sheets that I've uh, been able to create over uh, for my uh, company, Brandlex Media, which is an e-commerce agency, and we work with like twelve businesses at the same time, and so. In order to work with 12 businesses at the same time, you need to make sure that you, you create models that are actually sustainable um, and provide value, right? And so this is the first thing that I would um, I would initially start creating if I were you. It's a tracking system that tracks all of your sales, all of your ad spend, all of your KPIs, your CPMs, your cost per clicks, literally your entire business. And if you want this exact sheet, you can just join my private community. This is where we share everything, but you can also build it yourself or pay somebody or whatever, probably a hundred, 200 bucks to build it for you. Um, it's not expensive, but this is automatically going to increase the, the, your enterprise value because you literally track every single number. And as you can notice here, these, this sheet, um, is, is based on color coding, right? So we can immediately understand the direction of the business just by looking at the color coding. Of course, green is positive and, and red is not. Now, this is uh, something that is super, super fundamental. One other thing other than tracking KPIs that I probably should have added in, in, the, in the other previous form uh, or diagram is tracking your financials, right? So P&L, having accounting, all those things are, of course, necessary. And I'm assuming you're smart enough to know that. Right, because then you cannot present yourself to a buyer if you don't have financial models, right? So if you don't have that, make sure you have an accounting firm. It's not expensive, it's like two hundred dollars, three or four hundred dollars a month, not more than that, um, to manage all of your books. And then of course hire somebody that can manage your finances, right? Your P and Ls, and if a good accounting firm will also offer those services, right? So from a KPI standpoint, advertising returns. MER, ROAS, you need a tracking sheet like this, which will allow you to make uh, make the right decisions, not based on emotions, but based on data. Data. Now, one other thing that is really, really helpful um, is having a creative testing tracker. Now, this is, you know, if, if you go and speak to a, a private equity investor, the one thing that I would, uh, I'm just saying private equity because you know they they look like they look to buy companies quite often so i'm just going to say buyer for the next time but if i were to speak to a buyer the first thing that i would actually show them is show them that we are actually tracking every single test that we put out in the market and we track its kpi what product we launched what landing page we used what creative concept we use what marketing angle we use what emotion we inspired to extract from the from the avatar customer what avatar customer we're using what hook we used what messaging we used, and essentially what we do with this sheet is that every single column or sorry I, I should say every single row that you see over here this one this one this one this one they're basically all an ad set like a, a test right and as you can see here we track when it's launched by the month the product name this is a, a template of course that's why it says product one we track break even ROAS 
uh, the creative concept that we use, the marketing angle that we use, the emotion that we want to once again extract from the, the customer, the avatar customer, the hook, the messaging, every single thing. And then we also add typically like the ad copy and the creative link, whether it's an image or a video, etc. And then we actually document the entire process of like the results, whether it was a winner, a loser, uh, to be determined or whatever, break even. And we track the ad spend, the ROAS, which is also of course color coded, right? And so I would show the, the the buyer that every single test that we do is completely 100% tracked and we know exactly what to do, what is our next gonna, uh, what our next test is going to be essentially. And so we don't, you know, um, a, a big problem with e-com brands is that they don't have a process where they track what's working and what is not working. And they just look at their competitors, as I said at the beginning of the, of the video, trying to find something that sticks on the wall essentially. So we don't wanna do that. It's not smart. It's not sustainable. Uh, it's like hoping that something sticks on the wall, which is what buyers don't want you to do. They, they want to see a systematized process that they can actually come in and easily replicate, which is which is th these sheets and, and, and financial models or KPI tracking models. And of course, that what you can do is that you take your learnings and you write your notes and then you can come up with a new test or next step, as you can see over here. So you know, we noticed that this one over here, this test number two did very well. And so we would have a next step where we propose a, maybe a similar test or a, a similar creative concept that we want to test and scale, right? And then of course, from all of this comes amazing dashboards and like graphical representations that you can create once you have all of your columns filled out. And so in this example, this is just an example, we can literally track what our win rate is. So out of like 10 ad sets that we launch or 10 creative concepts, how many are actually winners? In this example, it's like whatever, 11%, 35% are to be determined, 30% are losers, and 23% are break even. So this is like, you know, decent metrics. And then we can do like ad formats tests. So 50% of the ads that we launched were videos, 50% were images. Just having a super cool way of doing this uh, or of, of reporting this is, is really, really important. Same thing that we do just for documentation, just to, to, to finish the KPI tracking dashboard circle here is that we do the same thing for ad copies and visuals we have a systematized way to track every single ad copy that we put so for example we would write the ad copy here along with the headline and then we would based on colors uh the colors tells us whether we tested the ad copy or we have it or it still has to be tested and then we track them based on when we launched them and whether you know what type of stage of, of different level of awareness they are in so like maybe it was for most aware for product aware for solution aware problem aware, completely unaware and so based on the stages right of marketing a level of awareness then we put the right ad copy in the right place and once again this is like a hub where we can document everything that we publish and work on every single thing that you do should be documented into some sort of sheet so that the buyer can actually go back and see okay they actually tested this okay they tested this and it didn't work or they tested this and it worked very well. And so just having a hub where you can rely on, same for visuals. We have like the exact same photocopy of the sheet, but just for like videos that we that we do with their links and feedback or whatever. This is mostly for clients that we that's why we have a feedback column. And same thing with images. This is just a template, right? And then we also track UGC collaborations. This is probably the last thing I'm going to talk about here just to move on. But we also have a sheet where we track all of our UGC collaborations. So guess what the buyer can do? They can go in here and track all of these people that you've worked with. You have all of their emails, their addresses, their their pricing, right? Having everything into one spot where they can just come in, repla replace you, and improve your process and scale. That's what buyers are looking for. They don't want complex, um, unscalable uh, business models. They want easy business models that can scale and can easily be replicated. Um, and it doesn't require like, 50 people just to do one particular thing it has to be very simple to understand and you have to document everything so we do the same thing with like cro so we have a cro tracker to test like landing pages and tests but i'm not going to go this far uh, that's you know you get the point tracking your kpis next thing is number three is having a bulletproof and this is mostly for ecom having a bulletproof creative infrastructure if a buyer is looking to buy an ecom business they, you better tell them that you have a consistent, predictable way of producing content every single week through images and mostly through videos, right? Because 
in most of the scenarios, videos will outperform images, right? And so what I'm going to show you here is basically a process that I've sp spoken about in the other videos as well, where we basically leverage UG UGC creators and have a systematized way to basically create unlimited pieces of content. And so adding this stack into your e-commerce business will automatically increase enterprise value as you explain it the way that I'm out uh, to the buyer, the way that I'm, out, uh, I'm about to explain it to you. And so we leverage UGC creators and we asked uh, them to film B-rolls and a B-roll is essentially a three to five second scene. And we tell them, okay, film 10 to 20 B-rolls, uh, you being happy, you being sad, you unboxing the video, you showing the video to your friend, you showing the video or a reaction to your boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever. And so we essentially asked them to film so many different like B-rolls and pieces of uh, uh, footage and scenes that we can put everything together and create our own storyboard and storyline. And then guess what? You can leverage AI to basically, you know, do your own scripts. And so you can do like AI voiceover scripts with like a B-roll variations to scale ultimately. And then what ends up happening is that you have a very easy and repeatable process where you can leverage creators that, by the way, we would essentially have over here. Right? As our, within our tracking sheet, we leverage these people and then we ask them to have uh, deliver systematically every single week or every single month, whatever the agreement is, B-rolls and scenes that we can then leverage for, throughout uh, by leveraging our uh, editors in-house to build scenes and different storyboards and different storylines and different marketing angles to scale your content machine or engine, call it whatever you want. And having this process will allow you to have a systematized and predictable way of scaling your creatives, which is exactly what you need to get to the next level. And so having a systematized process like this and presenting this to your investor or your buyer is going to move the needle forward and it's going to help them make a, a good decision about buying your business. Okay. One other thing that uh, investors look for or buyers look for is making sure that you don't put all of your eggs in one basket, right? So if you're doing TikTok, why not also explore Snapchat or Google or Pinterest or email marketing or SMS marketing, right? Meta, TikTok, Bing, SMS, all of these things. What essentially um, these buyers want to look for is a process where as soon as the customer comes in, whether it's from Snapchat or whatever source, you make it impossible for them to go out and they're essentially in the ecosystem, right? And this ecosystem ne needs to revolve around multiple different facades and multiple different platforms, which is what allows them to essentially never lose a customer, right? Wherever the customer goes, they see you and only you, and this is how you position your brand as the authority in your niche, right? And so this is what investors look for. So if you're just doing one platform, even if you're doing seven figures a month, I actually don't care. It's not about the numbers. It's about how you present your business, right? If you're doing one channel and you're doing very, very well, explore other channels. Even if you don't, if you can't prospect there, meaning that you literally prospecting audiences and prospecting ads to completely cold audiences are just not working, you can still put an extra three, four or five, 10% of your budget towards just retargeting, which is most likely seven times out of 10 going to work for you because you have a, maybe a stronger foundation somewhere else. So make sure that you build omnipresence because it's going to increase once again, enterprise value a lot more, and it's going to distribute your ad spend risk so that you can have a much more consistent and less fluctuating revenue stream every single day, right? One thing that you got to learn with e-com is that if you do one channel, one product, one shop, one offer, you, you're going to find inconsistent in C's within your e-commerce business. If you have multiple offers, multiple angles, multiple ads, multiple ad platforms, your consistency, le consistency levels are going to be way more uh, consistent, right? Hopefully this makes sense. Last thing but not, uh, but not least is building a strong and, and structured team. You want to be able to build a team um, that is very easy to get into and work with, right? You don't want super kind of like structure, unstructured um, team that cannot work together or that requires a lot of management. You want to create a team that is very streamlined, very lean, and especially with e-com, you, you can actually do that. I have e-commerce clients that have seven employees or less than 10 employees that run eight-figure empires. So you don't need who knows what, okay? You need at least, you know, those four, five, seven, ten people in your team, whether it's an agency that feels like an in-house team or an extension of your in-house team or whether you want to create this team in-house yourself, you have to create something like this. And so the way that we operate at Brandlux Media and the way that we structured our agency is that for every 
um, pod, which could be a paid advertising pod or an email marketing pod, right? And of course, each pod is gonna be different based on department and based on service. I just wanted to put uh, in a, a paid advertising pod because you know paid ads is a popular service and something people want. And um, and so you have a pod director that basically manages the entire uh, paid ads division. You ha you would have a header performance, which ba is basically the person in charge of actually coming up with you know new creative ideas or uh, ma making sure that they monitor ad results and they go in and track everything into like the KPI tracking sheet, right? This is what the, the head of performance does. They're basically head of performance, literally. And then we also have a creative UGC director that is basically, basically in parallel that have a head of performance but handles more the creative side. And then on the on the lower side of the of the scheme or this pod is we have media buyers we, and we have creative directors or sorry, creative strategists that come up with copy, headlines, captions, etc. And then of course, under these people, there's video editors and graphic designers. If you wanna build, uh, wanna scale to eight figures, this is probably all you need. Uh, when it comes to the paid advertising side and so it, you know it's this is probably going to be yourself so it's going to be one two three four five six between five and seven people and then if you want to add maybe email marketing right somebody that does email marketing you maybe hire an extra person uh, and then if you want to have somebody that does maybe you know another service like TikTok shop i don't know you probably need to hire another person but typically you can build an eight-figure empire or multi seven figure empire between five and ten people and of course, it's going to be different every time, but this is just the way that we've structured it. Okay, so hopefully this makes sense. Understand that building a strong team is going to be one of the main motivating factors that is going to have a buyer say, hey, I'm interested. Okay, so um, hopefully this video was valuable. Uh, I hope it was. Let me know if you have any questions about similar topics. And uh, yeah, that's it. Like, subscribe, ring the bell and see you in the next one. Bye bye.